was born at Ikom, a town in Cross River State, a state in South Nigeria, which derives its name from the Cross River, a river which is passing through the state. The major languages of communication in the state are local languages like Bekwara, Ejukan, Efik. She migrated to America at the age of four, was raised in Washington, D.C., and afterwards moved on to Oklahoma. Nonetheless, we see the poem obviously sets precedence to Nigerian culture, the culture of a homeland. In line with the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s, Negritude movements of the 1930s and Black Arts movement of the 1960s, Basi P. upholds the distinctiveness, pride, values and primeval nature of the Nigerian culture. In one of her interviews, she states, her relationship with America was recent, but with Nigeria, she had started centuries back. Basi P. is a Nigerian-born American spoken word poet. What is spoken word art? Poetry recitation, jazz music, poetry slams, hip hops, prose monologues and such like artistic performances inclusively are called as spoken word art. It is an oral art which is based on aesthetics of sound such as intonation and wordplay. She participated in Deaf Poetry Jam, a spoken word poetry television series broadcast on, on popular American television network HBO. She doesn't disown America but pleasurably and passionately declares her long drawn attachment to Nigeria. Now we have Homeward by Basic P. Today I remember my grandmother. She attempts to connect with her second children. She finds the only English words she knows from somewhere hidden in the belly of a four foot nine inch body. It turns up in the mind of the speaker fragments of memories regarding her grandmother as to how she was trying to communicate with her second children or her grandchildren. From words she knows from somewhere hidden in the belly with a strenuous effort or a strained effort, she articulates the only English word she knows. The speaker wishes the reader to imagine how her grandmother looks like. She is hinting at her physical configuration. She is short with 4 foot 9 inch height. And instead of a wong, she greets us with a bye bye. A wong is a word in Nigerian language which means stay united and this is a word of welcome. Her grandmother collects her thoughts and she she is trying to optimize probably the only English word she knows that is bye bye. She thinks this word is apt to replace a wong. Beginning us into her thin clay colored arms. Yes, she is a fairy godmother who ever keeps her arms open for her grandchildren. She has got thin clay colored arms but it is stretched out always to offer refuge for her grandchildren. She has my mother's face as to the time peers at me from eyes wide and dark like mine. After a long while when she sees the granny, she feels if her mother's face is peeping at her in the grandmother's profile, especially through those wide and dark eyes. Over the time the grandmother takes after the mother. I walk into these arms, the ones that mothered my mother, taught her how to mother me. Nothing can love me so much like my grandmother's arms. It is those arms that taught my mother how to take care of me. I was sweating it all out. I was waiting so far to collapse into my grandmother's arms. Inhale the history from her skin. She holds everything maternal. Even her very skin breathes the law of the Nigerian culture. She holds everything typical of the classic culture is richness. She reminds me of the little girl, bow-legged and round-faced, holding toasted corn in one hand and a fistful of chin-chin in the other, still begging for orange fanta to wash it all down. As she moves on to the preoccupation of her village life, the memories of her grandmother surges forth in her mind. Her grandmother draws out the little girl in her, as she had been once. Many a time it happens. We realize ourselves only through this. We can be emotionally, spiritually and mentally complete only in the presence of certain people, places or things. As a child, she was round-faced and bow-legged. bow leg is a diseased condition in which legs curve out at the knees. When she sees her grandma, her mind flashes back to torrents of perceptions and sensations 
in her childhood. As children usually move around with the snacks they carry along, she would have roasted corn in one hand and chin chin on the other. Chin chin is a fried snack in Nigeria. Then it is said, still begging for orange fanda to wash it all down. Orange fanda to wash it all down. She would demand orange fanda along with chin chin. I remember her voice firm yet loving. Cha cha, mama, baze, agi, awai, you must eat then drink. The words baze, agi, awai, words from Nigerian language, the local language. Such words mean something divine, kingly and precious. So the firm yet loving voice, it speaks of the audacity of her love. She says you must eat then drink. Such an advice is the natural outgrowth of concern and affection of any grandma. Sometimes I forget but she remembers a small scared girl carried away on an iron bird to America. Seems like that same bird has returned only to replace her, that perfect girl with me. This strange tongue-tied woman, the one that can barely say hello without the clicks and moans and dips and tones of the white man's language. She listens now as I struggle with Atom Adam. I forget but she remembers a small scared girl carried away on an iron bird to America. Seems like that same bird has returned only to replace her. So years back, the disquieting scene of her grandchild being plucked out from her for the first time, the iron bird carrying her to America is ingrained deep and painful in the memory of her grandmother. That might perhaps be a tear-stained farewell for the grandmother. That same bird has returned now, the speaker feels, to get her back once again to her childhood. To replace her, that perfect girl with me, this strange tongue-tied woman, the one that can barely say hello, without the clicks and moans and dips and tones of the white man's language. That perfect girl back in the childhood has now undergone a strange metamorphosis, has now become a shy, nervous woman who can hardly say hello without the characteristic clicks and moans the long deep sounds of the white man's language. At the same time, who is waiting to multiply her granny's love. Her verbal repertoire doesn't have enough words to communicate with her grandmother in the local language. She listens now as I struggle with it to madam. We see here, the grandmother is quite helpless to involve the speaker's predicament. As the times have changed, years have passed, the speaker has now migrated to America and is in the present state of things due to her interaction in a multicultural and multilingual environment. Victim Adam Allusion is to the book of Genesis in Holy Bible and Egyptian mythology. According to the Bible, Adam is the first man and Greek mythology portrays Eptim as the first god who was self-created out of water. Adam is also interpreted as a rescript of Eptim as both draw parallels at different levels. Here, the reference is for the very beginning or for the infinitely fundamental. In this context, the speaker is delving deep in her memory for some words in the local language to get her feelings across to her grandmother. She finds it deeply painful to be in front of her grandmother without a language in common. Thus, she is groping for at least a bare minimum of words from what she could utter in her childhood. It breaks my heart to realize that I can only love her clearly in English. At this point, it comes home to her that she can have her communication effectively with her grandmother only in English. She can pour her heart out only in the white man's language. Thus she feels heartbroken and disappointed. But tears do not replace the words. Love will not make it easier, make it less heavy. Desire will not help me remember what the words taste like flowing like the cross river from my tongue. She says she is packed with the tears, love and desire. But these realities, tears, love and desire to remember, all these become insufficient to enhance the flow of her language, like the spontaneous rush of water in the Cross River. Cross River is a river flowing through Cross River State in South Nigeria. 
But this is not my only tongue, insolent and heavy with the awkward moments of amber waves. But this is not my only tongue. Now she's switching over to the American milieu where she says this is not my only tongue. She comes to terms with the realities and she says this is not my only tongue. She is partly American but primarily a Niger girl. English is no less but indigenous is something beyond for her. Insolent and heavy with the awkward movements of amber waves. English pronunciation is compared to the movement of amber waves. Amber is a kind of sticky glue like yellowish substance or resin which is coming out of trees. Technically speaking, resin comes out of fossilized or age old trees. It's a kind of liquid which is produced of any wounded tree. Here it simply means sticky alloyish liquid. Let's imagine how the movement of amber is like. It is a zigzag wavy movement. She compares the pronunciation of English language with the heavy oozing out of words. She feels it's so rude, it's insolent, it's so rude. East or West, this is not my village. Yes, she has made her mind about it and talks it outright. This is not a village. This is not what she has been searching for. She has never been a part and parcel of it. It has never embraced her the way she wished. Now she is far off east or west. One thing is damn sure for her. Wherever she now is not her village, there was a positive of inclusiveness. And my heart still longs for my grandmother's voice. Steady and strong, crossing rivers and oceans, rounding buildings of mud, thatched roof of steel and glass, concrete and confusion. There is an unmet longing in my heart that is to listen to my grandmother's voice. She was so much persuasive, tactful and fearless that her voice could penetrate mud buildings or thatched houses or steel and glass or concrete buildings. It would break through any confusion to sort it out. Still, I am afraid that it will not find me here in this land Miles from the one that welcomed me into this world lifetimes before I existed in this cosmopolitan space. Still, the saddest thing is that in this land, America, where the speaker is staying presently, miles and miles away from the Nigerian village where she was born, she finds perhaps no reach of her grandmother's voice or not even an echo. America has been keeping her for a long time. But her love for Nigeria is a lot more, as she had loved it even lifetimes before she started to exist. It's a love of the race, of the class, of the blood and of the nation as well. Nabang Noni and Benyami, Nabang Noni and Benyami, what will I teach my children? What will I tell them of where I have been? The earth that shaped me, the hands that held me, the land that made me. What will they call home and will they hear it if and when it calls them? She is speaking for the black diaspora. The speaker is getting worried over how she can make her children grasp the Nigerian history, its territories, the inseparable bondings she had. How she can put them in the swim of things. If at all they are cold by their roots, will they hear it? My heart still holds the salt and clay of Ujab. She says, my heart always carries the salt and clay of Ujab. The taste of salt and the smell of clay to Jap is still very close to my heart. The smell of the clay, the taste of the salt hasn't diminished even to a bit. The whole ambience is ongoing inside her. So painful as long as there is no physical proximity. Physically it is afar. The strength of her women isn't lost in me. But sometimes I forget and find it difficult to walk in bare feet. A fright to remember what history feels like dust covered and peeking from brown toes. The strength of Nigerian women folk has been her trademark too. But unlike the women folk of Nigeria, she sometimes finds it difficult and forget to walk barefoot because it was hurting for her to relive the horrible times of her precursors. 
Here is an oblique reference to how his tail looked down upon the brown toes and dirt covered feet. Oklahoma, DC, Brooklyn will not help me remember Ikom Ujjab Kalaba. These lines introduce American cities as well as Nigerian towns placed side by side in speaker trying to bring out the gulf she is never able to bridge, a malformation which every Nigerian immigrant may feel in America. Of these places, Kalabar is the capital of Cross River State. Ikom, a town in Cross River State, the hometown of Basakpi. Oklahoma, a state in South Central region of US. DC is the District of Columbia, formerly, and now Washington, the capital of United States. And Brooklyn, a borough in the New York City, city's most populous borough. The point she makes here is that Brooklyn, DC, or Oklahoma have never been capable to emerge as Ikom Ujjapur Kalabar to comfort her at least by a few reflective trances. Northeast cities offer themselves brighter, more lovable and more memorable to her than Kalabar, Ujjab or Ikko. They will also not let me forget fingers sticky with fufu, swallowed hall, or tongue stinging numb from planting fried in palm oil. But I have lost the grit and the grain of my grandmother's gary. I can't taste past this nostalgic lump in my throat. Can't stomach the reality of this divided culture. A whole lot of sensations, experiences of Nigeria is still green, keeps growing alongside and forms a nostalgic lump in her throat. Fufu swallowed as a whole, not breaking into pieces, the fingers remaining sticky, planting fried in palm oil and the numb and painful tongue, all these sorts of memories. Fufu is a West African staple food. It is cooked by staple flour made by pounding cassava, yam or plantain and then mixing with hot water. But I have lost the grit and the grain of my grandmother's gary. Grain means small hard pieces. Grit means very small pieces. Grit also means courage. So the lime carries surface level as well as deeper level meanings. Grandmother's Gary was a means of transferring to her courage and confidence along the footstep. So now she misses all this courage, confidence as well as the footstep. I can't taste past this nostalgic lump in my throat. I can't taste this nostalgic lump because I can't revert to past. Then it turns into Zoro. It has formed a swelling or a heaviness in my throat, a lump of stagnant emotions which I find so difficult to cut off. I can't taste past this nostalgic lump in my throat, can't stomach the reality of this, my divided culture. I can't approve of this divided culture where my perceptions, desires and dreams are situated. So distressing, as the speaker always feels partly missing, till she retrieves or rejoins her Nigerian home. Sense of flows over the bygone days has formed a lump which can neither be swallowed nor removed. African, American, I am everything and I am nothing. Nigeria quietly begs me to remember, while America slowly urges me to forget, but it's for my past is for my future, it is for my children and it is for you grandmother that I must always, always remember. She is African at the same time American too. The dichotomy of the cultures reduces me to nothingness. My cultural identity is nullified which I should try forcibly to assert. Nigeria, the homeland, pleads me not to forget while America persuades me to forget. But she is desired it. She is a devotee of Nigeria and a preserver of Nigerian culture. She can complete herself only by casting her mind back to Nigeria. To fulfill her future, the destiny of her children, she can't go on without Nigeria. And most importantly, for her beloved grandmother, 
she confirms to what she is now. I must always, always remember.